the Christian life we are often, well, every moment faced with pivotal decisions about whether we will be Christ followers or whether we will be followers of our own desires of the world. Some of those decisions are very, very, very major. And some of them, you know, perhaps seem minor, but they do matter because everything needs to be to the glory of God. Of course, we know that the ultimate question we are called to answer is, who do you say that I am? And if we say that Christ is the Son of the living God, then there's a responsibility for that. There is, it's not just a simple statement. It has requirements. It affects life. It changes life. In the, sixth, in the uh, book from St. John Moscus, The Spiritual Meadow, which was written around 600 A.D., he wrote with, of course, his fellow traveler Sophronius, who wrote the life of St. Mary of Egypt. He recounts these tales variously from Palestine and from Egypt, very edifying. And one of them he tells is that he was in Constantinople and, where was Alexander? But anyway, one of the big cities of Christendom at the time. And he runs across a man in the church and begins to ask him about his life. And he tells the story that his father had been a very, very wealthy man but a very pious man who gave constantly to the poor, gave everything he had away, tried to serve everyone, and of course continually went to church. So one day, the father comes to the son and says, my son, which is it that you prefer? That I give you all of my wealth, or that I gave you Christ as your guardian? The son wisely realized the import of this question. It was the most vital question he was ever going to answer at that moment, or perhaps for his entire life. And he thought and said, well, everything of this world and riches pass away, but my Christ is eternal. I prefer that you gave me Christ. His father told him very well, and his father began to, without abandon, give away every dime that he had, to the poor. Eventually the father dies, and the son is left without really any means of living. He gets by, but living very faithfully and piously, because this is a decision he made. <clears throat> well, there was another person in town, a daughter, a woman, who had a very wealthy family, but they were very pious. But one day the mother and the father said, our daughter is at the age to be married now. The one thing she lacks is a, is a husband. She has a very virtuous soul. We have very great money. But we have to be careful about who we marry her to because if we marry her to someone who is of the same class as we are, perhaps that person will not have lived a pure life, will not be faithful to Christ, and her life will be nothing but utter misery after this point because she is yoked to someone quite unequally. Well, they said, let us marry her to someone of a lower social class, who will not care so much about these things, but someone who is pious and prayerful. So they decided that they would marry her to the first man that came into church that morning. They sat there praying. This is perhaps great, great faith. And the man comes in very early. It happens to be this son. So they asked him about his way of life. And he described what had happened in his life. And they asked him, you were the son of this man? They knew this man very well who had given away all his money to the poor and to the church. And they then asked him if he was married. And of course he said no. They chose him. And the two lived a beautiful life of virtue. That decision changed the entire man's life. doesn't mean that if we make such a decision, we're going to have wealth and riches as well, but it does mean we'll have the one thing needful, the kingdom of heaven. You see in the gospel today, this very familiar passage, and a man is confronted with the same type of question. It seems that he lived a very righteous life. He followed all of the commandments as far as he knew them. But very outwardly, it seems, there was much more depth. And there was a great part of this man that we can admire. There was something burning in his heart that desired something a little more deep. 
what must I do? What else must I do? What must I do to be perfect, really? Because remember, our Lord tells us that we are to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. It's a high calling. And the Lord tells him, you desire to be perfect, so all that you have, give it to the poor. You have treasure in heaven and come follow me. The man, after a brief thought, this was too much for him to bear and turned away. It's a really, really tragic story. Of course, the Lord comforts the apostles, saying that this could have even been come, overcome with the grace of God. All things are possible with God. We know that everyone doesn't make this decision. Like the previous man I mentioned, St. Anthony the Great, as we know, heard this very passage when he, worked, when he walked into church one day and made that the fruit, the, the food for his entire life. That sentence was provision to take him into the kingdom of heaven. He took it for himself, sold everything he had, and went and followed Christ. We all are going to have decisions that are of paramount importance every day. Is this money going to be more important to me than Christ? Is this entertainment going to be more important to me than Christ? Is my pride and my ego and my anger with others going to be more important than Christ? My desires for others more than for Christ? Those questions are going to always come up in our lives. Archimandrite Tikhon, in that book many of you have read, Everyday Saints, tells a wonderful story in this book of a monastery in pre-revolutionary Russia. He said, describes very much out of the depths of Russia, way away from the big cities, which had a notorious way of life. The monks were drunkards, gluttons, and idlers, and that's all they did, and the people hated them. It's one of the reasons why many people rose up against a lot of monks in Russia, because monastic life had fallen by the wayside. Of course, we know we had those great examples of Optina and Glinsk and Skov, there were very great elders throughout Russia, but there was also a lot of bad. So one day, after the revolution takes place, or begins, and the Bolsheviks come to this monastery and to this little village, and they drag out these monks. Of course, they've been doing everything they can to arouse the passions of these people, reminding them of how horrible these people are. They've been living off of you for years. They take the gospel and the cross in front of them and throw them to the ground. I say, now you see what these drunkards and gluttons and idlers will do. They will throw these things away that they fooled you with and stomp on them. They threw them on the ground and called these monks to renounce this, thinking that they would easily do so just so they could have an easy life and get away with this. The abbot, as they described him as very obese, round-faced, they said, and perhaps a little bit inebriated even at the time, looks at the brothers at this moment and says, Brethren, we have lived our lives as pigs. Let us at least die as Christians. And with that, none of them stepped forward to stop on the gospel of the cross. And every one of them was beheaded with the sabers of the Bolsheviks and inherited the kingdom of heaven in that moment. Brothers and sisters, every day we are confronted with similar questions. Do we want to continue to live our lives as pigs or as Christians? Do we want to live our lives as real Christians or just nominal people on Sundays? Every moment matters. Should I say my prayers tonight? Pivotal question. Should I keep the fast? Pivotal question. Some of you made a pivotal decision this morning. Should I stay in with this horrible weather? Should I come to church? God bless you for coming. Should I argue with this person and bear a grudge? Or should I make the right decision to be Christ-like and bear these things with humility and love and bless those who curse me? Should I complain constantly about my infirmities? Should I accept them as the providence of God for my life? We could go on and on and on, the multitude of the decisions that will come on not only in the course of this liturgy, but after we leave this church, but throughout all of our lives. Every one of us is going to have the pivotal decision to make, but every one of us is going to have 
millions of pivotal decisions to make. Each and every moment should be to the glory of God. True Christians live their entire lives to the glory of God. Reminding again of St. Herman, from this day, from this hour, from this minute, let us love God above all else and seek to fulfill His holy will. Make the pivotal decision. Take up your cross and come follow Christ. Amen. Amen.